Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to a new Let's Play series on the channel. And today we're getting things started with Sun Ce in the 194 A World Betrayed DLC. Now Sun Ce is one of the stars in this DLC with a many new faction mechanics and he takes over his father's faction uh, which was playable in the 190 campaign. And Sun Ce here is still the little conqueror that we know him to be. And that brings us an uh, extra 100% charge bonus for cavalry, as well as 15% extra melee damage for all shot cavalry. So Sun Tzu is very, very good as a cavalry commander. Uh, this 100% boost is game changing. It just makes your unit so much stronger. Uh, you're not only your shot cavalry, but your melee cav as well. Just doubling their charge bonus makes them insanely powerful on the battlefield. And with the changes in patch 1.5, where most cavalry got more speed, uh, just makes their charge even more devastating. Now, faction specialization, Sun Tzu actually has a ton of different ones, and the one that's mainly featured here is his resource called Reckless Luck. This is kind of a timer on Sun Tzu because it grants huge bonuses, and you start out with full Reckless Luck, but every turn you will lose 10 points, and when it becomes depleted, which takes about 25 turns if you don't do anything, Sun Tzu will die. Uh, this is a reflection on his characteristic uh, in history, where he uh, burned really bright really fast, but also burned out really quick. Uh, he died quite young, despite achieving so much in a short span of time. And this is kind of a reflection on that, but there are a series of missions called Legacy of Wu, where you can uh, slow down the decay of Reckless Luck, and even reverse the decay uh, into something where you can enjoy these bonuses like extreme speed on the campaign, and uh, military supply, and other bonuses uh, for the rest of your campaign. Very powerful. He also has some unique court positions with different bonuses based on the rank of your character, or the level of your character. And you have a special mechanic called Shared Expertise that can help you level up your generals faster. So a lot of different play styles um, based on character expansion. You need to expand rapidly to fulfill your legacy so that you can slow down your reckless luck. And he has a ton of unique features. So first off, you from your father, you got the Mercenary Archer, Mercenary Infantry, and Mercenary Cavalry. These are available at rank 1, 3, and 5 for all your generals. They have the unique advantage of uh, mustering to full on summoning. So there is no mustering downtime for these units. They come ready and fully packed for your punch. And additionally, you get two unique units that are exclusive to Sun Ce in the Tiger Guard and the Handmade Guard. And these two units both have guard in their name and are available at rank 3 and 6. And they have this guard in their name because they give out this passive buff to all generals nearby where it improves the general's uh, damage resistance, making them even stronger on the battlefield. So they kind of act as bodyguards to your units. Uh, the Tiger Guard here is an excellent unit. As you can see, it looks like a spear guard uh, with extra skills. So it makes them an excellent recruit uh, for your army. And handmade guards are great melee cavalry that take advantage of your extra charge bonus, as well as the range block chance and missile resistance that was introduced uh, in patch 1.5 as well. And noteworthy characters, there's more than these four. If you want to fill out all the word uh, noteworthy characters for Sun Ce, you got to go maybe the whole page uh, because he's got a ton of officers lined up for him to recruit that are related to the Wu faction in the Three Kingdoms. And the ones we see here are Zhou Yu, who is his childhood friend and a strategist for Wu, Huang Gai, and Chen Pu, two of these old guard generals that served his father and now will serve the young lord as he grows up and takes up the mantle of his father, and finally his younger brother Sun Quan. And there's many more, we'll talk about them once we get into game. Uh, unlike our last campaign where we played as Lu Bu, who is really the other star of a World Betrayed DLC, this one will be very historical. I'm going to try to follow in the conquest footsteps of Sun Ce uh, in the early days from 194 to uh, about uh, 197 until he broke off with Yuan Shu. Uh, from that point on, we're going to deviate a little bit simply because if we follow history all the way through, he's going to die. And we're not going to let that happen. We're going to let him shine. Uh, but our conquest of the South and the fulfill, uh, fulfillment of our father's legacy will be uh, quite historical in how we approach the conquest steps. So can't wait to get that started. 
We'll be playing this campaign on Legendary Legendary 40 Minute Battle Timer as always. Uh, there are no fancy mods, and we're only going to use the, flat, uh, the flag mod, which we had in our last campaign, and also the Battlefield Camera mod. Uh, those will be linked in the description below. And let's jump into the game here. Yesho 自从破虏将军谢氏以来杀父之仇或许是个不错的选择我都庇护孙家兴旺圣强 Alrighty, and we are loaded up into the game and we are on our quest for revenge Lord Sun Ce, you have served Yuan Shu as a loyal vassal since your father's death at the hand of Huang Zu four years ago He has been capricious and demanding master but you have served with honor and distinction but you will not forget your duty as a son Huang Zu must pay for killing your father. To make him do so, you will need land, warrior, and resources. Your family's homeland of Jiangdong would offer all these things. Perhaps Yuan Shu can be persuaded to let you take your father's former general south and build a base of your own. Until then, you must continue to obey his commands. Uh, so our early game objective here is Sun Ce is a man of great abilities, but he's reckless and his luck will not last forever. If Sun Ce's luck runs out, he will die. Achieving Sun Ce's ambitions grant powerful bonuses, whilst also de delaying his luck from running out. The faster it stops, the more of his luck will stay with him forever. Focus on recruiting powerful characters to your court. Okay, and our first mission is issued. We are responsible to conquer uh, Lu Kang's uh, territory in Lujiang and the reward is we get our father's general to return to serve us we get supplies from Yuan Shu for four turns which is a 
uh, cheap recruitment and faster mustering bonus, and also growing might, which gives our troops even more replenishment bonus and extra experience for five turns. So the reward is pretty huge for taking down Lu Jiang here. And Lu Kang is defending this um, by himself, poor guy. He does have a garrison, but not that strong. And we have some excellent troops with us. We have Lance Cavalry, Raider Cavalry, and Mercenary Infantry, and a Mercenary Archer. If you notice the Cavalry, you see how the charge is off the charts. 440? That's ridiculous. It's just so powerful uh, to double your charge. Even on like a small unit like the Raider Cavalry, which typically is the cheapest Cavalry in the game, you get 282, which is just outrageous amount of charge. We start out with a Scholar item and a G of the Imperial Guards. Not too shabby. Uh, this actually is pretty good considering the fact that you get the 10% character experience, which helps play into your faction mechanic. So we're going to first spend a little time talking about the faction for those of you who are new to Sun Tzu's faction. Uh, he has his main resource called Reckless Luck here. It starts out max at 250. Every turn there will be a 10 point decay. And when it reaches zero, you die. So that's pretty straightforward. At maximum tier, you get 40% campaign movement range, faction wide, 15% retinue upkeep discount, and plus 15 military supply. So it's really strong. The extra movement's nice, the cheap retinue is very nice, and it goes down as you lose tiers. And eventually, when you hit zero, you die. And our job is to prevent that from happening. So there's various ways to gain reckless luck and ways to slow down the decay. And most of it deals with Legacy of Wu quests. So this is a special quest that's related to Sun Ce as a character. Uh, the first couple, uh, Secure the Mountains, it requires us to ca capture the entirety of Xingdu uh, Commandery. Each of these counties we capture will give us five reckless luck. This is uh, just temporary increase. But if you get all three, you get plus three public order uh, in all your commanderies going forward, as well as plus two reckless luck per turn, which will slow down the decay. Similarly, you have other quests like secure the middle of the Yangtze, which is Poyang's four counties. Capturing each one of them will also give us reckless luck and also give us uh, stopping decay once you get all four as well as two additional assignment slots and so on and so forth jian ye kuai ji right they all have plus two reckless luck per turn and some various bonus that goes along with it and uh so you get all four of these commander recaptured you have plus eight and over here little conqueror you get prestige and plus one and then old guard you get plus one so by the time you complete the old guards at least if not in order, but if you complete these six right here, you get plus 10 reckless luck and you no longer lose reckless luck. But you'll be at whatever tier you're at uh, from the beginning. But there's more bonuses as you can see. If we move down to here, bandits and murderers, if you destroy both of them, you get two more. So there's ways to make it a positive gain every turn so that you can stay at maximum for the rest of your game. So it's actually quite powerful and there's many different bonuses you can go for uh, including some later game ones where you take the entirety of Changsha the homestead where your father was before he left to join the coalition Zhou Yu's ambition the northern part of the Jin province that he tried to take uh, post the battle of Chibi uh, legacy of Sun Ce which is requires you and your family members uh, like your daughter your sister your brother and your dear friend Zhou Yu to reach the rank six or five so ranking up is also a big part of the gameplay here. Uh, having characters with high rank and high stats also can grant you reckless luck. There's basically a lot of ways for you to uh, gain different bonuses. And this one will actually increase the stat on Sun Ce himself. And you also have stuff like the Road to Emperorship, which requires you to have no vassal master, basically leave Yuan Shu's control. Uh, have a capital with rank or nigh or higher settlement building. Uh, that's basically imperial city or large regional city. Or you can just have Luoyang as your capital and be rank 5 or higher. Uh, 10 regions that has access to the Yellow River and 25 regions north of the Yangtze River. So these are more late game things we can focus on. But in the beginning, we're going to be doing most of these capture. Because this is also how historically 
Sun Tzu grew his territory. We find ourselves on the north side of the Yanxi River at the start of the game. We are a vassal with no land to Yuan Shu's faction. And we only have ourselves and our mother, Lady Wu, uh, as uh, generals in our army, but that's about to change really quickly. Uh, historically, we were basically with our mother and our family when our father died, and then we stayed around Wu Jing's territory. Wu Jing, Wu Jing is uh, your mother's brother. And uh, later on, around 194, you took about 100 men and you rode off to join with Yuan Shu. And you, Yuan Shu basically handed over some of your father's old uh, generals and troops, about a thousand to you, and had you fight for him. And eventually opportunity would arise when he was sent to south uh, to do his bidding. And the path is really, we took out Lu, Lu Jiang, and then Sun Ce historically went south to fight Liu Yao, who was actually the rightful governor of the Yang province, or Yang Zhou. And uh, since Yuan Shu has set up shop, he had to, you know, make a makeshift government to the south, and the conflict between he and Sun Ce would push him out west, and then Sun Ce would actually take that opportunity after beating him to expand into Jianye, which is his historical land of the Wu commandery, and then expand down into Kuaiji and Xingdu to wipe out Yan Baihu and Wang Lang, uh, before sweeping down to Poyang and finally Yuzhang, which officially secures him what's the territory known as Jiangdong, and that's when he had a chance to relaunch his attack into uh, Lujiang to expand back north. Uh, but that's when the flame kind of burned out and he got assassinated. But we're not going to suffer that same fate, and we're going to kick things off by attacking this town. Uh, we do have a couple of items we could equip. Um, he has a very nice spear, so there's no need to change that. We're just going to give him this uh, scholar item here so that he can enjoy the plus 10% experience. We also start out with the Imperial Jade Seal, which is left by our father, but historically, Yuan Shu should already have it, uh, and we're going to be asked to give it away very, very soon. And that's it. We don't actually start out with any other um, ancillary items. And since we don't have territory, there's no trade deals or anything to worry about just yet. Uh, we'll just be doing this fight. We'll fight on the battlefield to showcase our cavalry. Alrighty, uh, we're loaded up into the game. Um, this is a town, so they do have a lot of arrow towers. Let's pick it up from maybe a side where we have a little less clustering of arrow towers maybe back here I mean they will still overlap but it's not as bad as here where the overlap is really severe we can attack from maybe from the angle off the side here and our goal is just to kill the units there's nothing fancy here I'm gonna keep the cavalry mostly healthy and we're probably gonna run up this guy to absorb most of the tower damage yeah, Sun Tzu will do some of the fighting as well. Right, so... Nothing too crazy here. I don't know if he's willing to duel. He's not. Okay. Nothing fancy here. Just have to break into their defense. Alright, they're starting to shoot at our general. We're gonna lose our horse. Or not. They weren't braced. That's silly. Alright, he's gonna move beyond them to distract the enemy archer from so that they don't shoot at our cavalry. And our cavalry will come in from the side once these guys engage. They gotta hold their position real quick. Alright, so we'll just have to herd the enemy range units away. Alright, get ready to engage. Alright, charge. Alright, stay on these guys. They're routed, kind of. Alright, and we capture the front gate. Poor guy. Have to hold the city from all our cavalry and all our infantry. See, if he give us distance to actually charge, he's really dead because our charge bonus will be applied if we get off a good charge. 
chase after him. They can clean up here. Move inside. Guys. Get out of the door. These units are routing, but they're blocking our way. Alright, here comes our cavalry funneling into the city. Alright, they're all routed. Amazingly, he has really high morale and he's actually not surrendering. We just actually have to kill him. Taking casualties, but messy fight. Guy has way too much morale. Alright, we captured it. We'll let him run away. See if we can capture him. He won't be employed by us because he's a faction leader, but at least we can release him and gain some goodwill. Alrighty. Uh, we didn't capture him, but we kept him alive. Um, we're going to occupy. So we finished our first mission, got these bonuses. Going to be very helpful if we want to build up. And our second mission is to help our uncle, Wu Jing, uh, against the Liu Yao. So what happened is Liu Yao took his job in the south and realized that, you know, the people that are around him, Wu Jing, Sun Ce, uh, Yuan Shu, are all his enemies. So he started attacking Wu Jing and we're here to help him out. And all we have to do is move into that territory. And once we do, an uh, old friend returns with his army. We get 2,500 into our treasury. And also we get some supplies from Yuan Shu. Uh, four more turns of this uh, minus 20% recruitment cost and minus two mustering turn. Very helpful. All right, faction destroyed. We're not going to be building up this territory very much because uh, story-wise, we're going to have to give it to our vassal master. But since we do have territory, we can uh, make some diplomatic moves. We can finally get a trade agreement. Uh, we can get it with anyone we want. We can just compare prices. So here, clearly Yuan Shu would offer the best deal. And we can take a peek at what items he have. Spy master. Okay, not that important. Book of change. Alright, not super tempting. And we're going to look at the other two factions who we can trade with as well. To see what we can do diplomatically. Foreman's pretty good. Has good set bonuses. You can definitely consider this. And uh, before we decide, let's talk to our uncle. Oh, he doesn't start out with much. Okay. Um, Foreman's good, but we're not going to have an administrator for a while. So we're actually going to trade for just cash. And we're going to make him pay us quite a bit of gold. And we do have a lot of marriage options because both our mom, who is a widow, and ourself, who is single, are available for marriage at the beginning. But we're going to wait out on that. Alright, we got this trade deal done. There's really no... Oh, we already started out a war with Liu Yao. Interesting. Okay. We uh, can also set up some assignments just so they can get some experience. Oh, we got the generals back. Great. So right after the battle, we got the reward of our father's old generals. Huang Gai, Chen Pu, Han Dan, uh, Han Dang. And uh, what we can do with them is assign them into our unique court positions. Our Chancellor position, where typically gives Peasantry Income Multiplier for most other factions, if you take a look. You get Character Salary Bonus decrease here, as well as extra assignments. And then for... Uh, uh, it's the same no matter what character you put in. It changes based on their rank. So once they rank up from 3 to 5, the effect becomes greater. And at rank 8, it becomes the maximum. And Grant Commandant uh, increases... Recruitment uh, decreases recruitment costs and increase the number of armies you have available. Uh, so it doesn't matter who we put in these positions, 
uh, they're going to basically provide the same bonuses. Handong could benefit greatly from the satisfaction change. So we can actually put him uh, as Grand Commandant here, I think. Plus 24. And uh, let's see, what do we want to do with Chancellor? It doesn't really matter which one we go with. We could definitely use the minus 10% character salary because character salary is going to go crazy for us. So you can see she's rank 1, so she doesn't actually get the bonus, right? By putting her in this position, you actually get nothing from her. So we definitely want high level characters in these positions. Um, I think we're going to put Huang Gai in here because Chen Po could probably be a good, be a good administrator going forward. All right, and we're also going to swap heirs because our little brother doesn't come of age for six more years. That's a long time. Our mother could take care of that role right now. And uh, that's pretty much it for when you do a court. We can talk about shared expertise real quick. So shared expertise is gained from characters in your court who are rank three or higher. So we have four characters who are rank three or higher right now, so we get plus four points every turn. If we have rank five characters, they give two points every turn. Rank eight characters give three points every turn. And rank 10 characters give four points every turn by themselves. So the higher level you have, the more of these you get. And what you can do with this points is to level up your existing characters. So for example, we can go to court, select our mother, share the expertise that other generals have, acquired 50 points and actually let's experiment this completely with her experience she has zero experience right now at level one 3000 ranks her up now she has 6000 so that gave her 6000 experience point and she ranked up to rank two and because she ranked up we can get one of these uh, leadership skills um, there's a bunch of really useful ones. I think right now we're more interested in getting this redeployment discount going quickly. So I'm actually going to go for this. And we can change some of her gear actually. Alright, that's fine. And uh, Huang Gai has a horse. We could just give him the Z right now. I think of the generals, Huang Gai should probably come out first. Alright, we don't have any other items. We have two assignment slots uh, here. Just We're going to use her here just to gain level, even though there's no peasantry income uh, in this commander, except for the 25 that we have from the settlement. I just want her to level up. And these are not that relevant either. Uh, Chen Pu is probably going to come out onto the battlefield. So Han Dong is the one that we're going to leave behind. We're going to ask him to help us with the replenishment rate for conscription. And technically we could recruit both of them into our army, but I think we're going to just use Chen Pu for now because we already have a Vanguard general here. And Chen Pu has a really good bonus uh, that we can enjoy if he unlocks this one where it helps nearby all the generals on the battlefield gain extra melee attack rate and melee evasion so we're trying to go for this early all right let's pump him out and do we want to keep any of these units right here comes the situation where we have to think about how much money we are making per turn we're going to actually demolish this building right here and not that one yet maybe yeah, actually maybe we'll get the discount because we know we can't keep this in the long term might as well get the refund for everything we can also invoke faction there's tons of things to do uh, on the first turn as uh, Sun Tse. so we need 15 food that's one of the missions raise a force that's another mission uh, both seem pretty easy to do uh, we are going to have to think about cost cutting here. So we will keep these two cheaper cavalry and we'll get rid of everyone else. Alright, so now we have a decent income 
uh, per turn at the front and uh, we can proceed before we activate the mission next turn. I believe we have everything covered. We did the trade routes, we did the courts, we used up our shared expertise and uh, we, we can go on. All right, Liu Bei and Kuo formed a coalition, good for them. And Yang Feng has declared war against Li Jue. His father's son. So Yuan Shu was willing to allow our father's former generals to join you in a campaign against Liu Yao. In return, he asked that you give him the imperial seal, which you inherited from your father. We're going to follow the story here, um, trying to keep things historical, or at least to the romance version of the story, where we somehow still have the seal. Uh, we're going to trade the seal in for a better relationship and also for uh, better recruitment, uh, four more turns of cheap recruitment which we will have to use once we decide to build up an army. Now, conversely, you can get 20 turns of plus 5 Reckless Luck, which basically halves your decay, uh, but you immediately go to war with Yuan Shu, which actually isn't a big deal. Like, you can definitely do this route and just fight him early on. He's not that tough early on. But we're going to keep with the story here. All right, and we gave away the seal. There's a bunch of characters that we could recruit. We're actually... Oh, Chen Yu is the one who was catching my eye a little bit, but he could be a spy. How is he from Yan Bai Hu's faction? Mastermind. Oh, maybe this is not the same Chen Yu that I'm thinking about. Uh, but there's really no one that we really need. We're not going to be short of characters, so we can just patiently proceed and you'll see what I mean. So first off, we're going to do the mission, which is just step into our uncle's territory. And once we're there, our old friend returns with his army. We get extra gold. We also get four more turns of his supplies. And our first mission is given. We have to go capture Xingdu's fishing port. And if alive, Lu Fan joins our court. So Lu Fan is similar to a household servant type. Just the loyal house guest, I guess is a better term. It's called Menke. So these guys are people who live with your family. They kind of work for your family. Think of like a godfather style. Uh, it's not really a mafia system, but like you have big clans and there's people who are not from famous clans, but are working for these big clans. And uh, Lu Fan was one of those persons for the Sun clan and very trusted uh, by Sun Ce. So we have another mission called Wealth of Knowledge. Reach, uh, reach rank four with at least one character and we get bonus experience for Sun Ce himself. Okay. And the character we got is our dear childhood friend, Zhou Yu, who has come to join us. So that's why I didn't recruit um, Huang Gai into our army, because we know we had a strategist coming. Uh, we're going to combine these two armies and uh, build it up in our own territory before sailing down south. So let's merge. Sun Ce is leading, no question here. Uh, even though we don't have reach, there is a lot of missions in Legacy of Wu that requires us to be leading the army, right? We have to capture five settlements with Sun Ce as commanding general, uh, when duels with him. So basically, it's better to have him lead the army right now. And it's not like uh, Zhou Yu has reach either. Hmm, patience is almost available. Anyhow, uh, we are here and we're going to rest up for a few turns to build up a force to attack uh, the fishing port here. All we really need for this offensive move is some siege weapons. Now he doesn't have, um, what do you call? It? He doesn't have the this the this unlocked for flaming shots, but he does have this unlocked for fire arrows. So we may actually just go for uh, crossbows here, and we're going to swap existing units. Actually, we can actually cheese out a few discount here, which we'll do. Give him general of the left before we recruit. And then after we recruit, give him general of the right so that they actually have less upkeep. He comes with a full slew of uh, ancillary items, which is quite nice. Although, I don't think he needs that sword. It's a gift, you know, to a childhood friend's mother. 
He can keep the other stuff though. We don't really need these. Yeah, most of our generals are doing fine in terms of their satisfaction. And we're not going to worry too much about that. We're going to basically build up our force and go down south, take care of this. We might give him a few more units. Um, I'm thinking about mercenary infantry, but they come, you know, ready, fully mustered. So we can recruit them at the last moment before we leave our territory uh, to save us a little bit of upkeep cost uh, in the long run here. Uh, we are short on cash, but that's expected given our very limited economy here. We're going to just build tax collector here for now. Uh, it also could make sense with our assignments. All right, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything we can do. We could potentially switch some of these core assignments, but there's really no reason to. They're all rank three, so the difference is not going to be huge. And we're just going to wait for more shared expertise to level up our other characters. Now let's continue. What is owed? All right, Yuan Shu has promised that Yukon's land would be yours, but he now wants to take them and appoint his own administrator, such as his right as your lord, but can such dishonesty be tolerated? So, uh, this happened historically. Uh, we were promised two different commanderies. Lu Jian was actually the second commandery that he promised us, and this is the second time he has told us that he's going to give it to someone else. And Liu Xun is actually going to take over. And eventually, historically, after we conquer the cells, we come back and reconquer it from Liu Xun a bit later on. And historically, we swallowed it, you know, we handed it over. And that's what we're going to do here as well. So territory loss, that's why we didn't spend any money on it. We actually downgraded a couple of times just to get the maximum value out of this place. But this also means we don't have any more trade routes. Oh, and also something we forgot to mention is that there's always a passive bonus called Man of Merit that's going to exist with Swinsla's faction. This will allow us to uh, become, when we're regionless, we can recruit and replenish in any non-hostile territory. So in this case where we lose our territory, we can still recruit in this area because we're in our vassal's land. And we also get 30% chance of capturing enemy officers post-battle. That's added on top of whatever other percentages we might have from like the patient skill. And we also have a permanent minus 20% to character salary because the game knows we're going to have a ton of characters that will be eating up our salary. All right, so we're fine without character, uh, territory. We're going to move to the edge here before we sail down towards the fishing port. And we're going to recruit, uh, not this turn, but next turn when we have more movement, right? We're going to recruit the couple of mercenary infantry we need in over here and then we're going to sell down and attack the fishing port right here so we're just going to basically wrap up this turn i don't think there's anything else we can do i don't think diplomatically we have much option now given that we don't have territory uh, but we're going to recover our territory soon and we can get this trade back on once we get the fishing port yeah there's nothing we can really do here let's continue Lu Bu's offering us a non-aggression pack. It's nice of him, but he's not paying us anything, so we'll just reject. All right, Cao Cao declare war on Li Jue. Interesting. And Yuan Shu is starting to his, you know, backstab on Liu Chong. So Liu Chong and Lu Kang are both li both generals who kind of refused to give him uh, food supplies, and he decided to get back to both of them. Everyone using contracts. All right. Not interested. Alright, we're gonna recruit a few units. Um, we could do a quick flip flop. Or actually, we don't even need to flip flop. We can quickly give him this title. Uh, the cost isn't applied until the end of the turn, right? Because it only affects the character salary. Uh, but what will happen is uh, if you don't switch them, like in the case where we swapped uh, with Zhou Yu, they'll actually gain um, a satisfaction hit because they feel like you fire them. So in this case, it's still better to use him to flip between general of the left. And then you go ahead and recruit your units slightly cheaper. Uh, we're going to get four of these. And then we're going to go back to him. And then flip him right back to general of the right, which is on cooldown. Interesting. Uh, so they do prevent you from doing it repeatedly on the same turn. We'll eat one turn of uh, extra um, uh, upkeep, but actually we can, can we give it to a different general? No. Okay. One turn cooldown on this. 
and we're gonna hop into the river. They have ran away. We can't reach it. That's a little sad. Let's uh, level up. So like I said before, we're going for flexibility for the redeployment cost discount. And now that she's rank 3, we should get 6 points. Uh, it should be reflected next turn because we just leveled her up. So it should go to 30 uh, next turn. We get a new reform before we end turn. And we start out with some uh, pretty good reforms. We get the private tutor out of the way. We also get uh, this reform here that's typically a school reform, but you get the minus 10% character salary, which is very key. Uh, you can even go one more far step farther to reduce, reduce another 10% character salary. That's not a bad move uh, for Sun Tzu's action. This reform here, by the same logic, is also a great move. Another 20% discount. I believe that's it. I think that's all the discount you can get for characters. Uh, from the reform tree here. I'm not sure if there's another discount care salary. I believe 20%, 40% all you, oh, there's another 25, but this one increases corruption a little bit. Um, if in the late game you have corruption totally under control, this isn't too bad. Uh, because if you think about it, we get 40% character salary decrease right now if we get these three reforms here. And then if you combine that with um, what we have passively, another 20%, that's 60% off. So if you can abuse titles and give all your characters titles, it's actually really cheap uh, percentage-wise. Um, is there another reform that we desperately need right now? Right, we're not really doing much command rebuilding. We can't do trade routes because we don't have any settlements uh, yet. And uh, over here, we already got redeployment discount. We can work towards. Hmm. There's really nothing that I. Yeah, I actually think this might be the best one to go for in the early game. Kind of want to compare. So right now we're at negative 690. And uh, let's see if we can get this one here. 555. Okay, so we saved about 135. Just uh, right now with our six general, with five of them costing us money. You'd sit, the leader doesn't cost anything. Um, I think that's worth it. Long run, it's going to come out pretty great for us. All right, we got one more turn before we can take the fishing port. Let's continue. All right, we got offered a deal by Yan Bai Hu for a non-aggression pact. That's not happening. First off, he's asking us to pay them for it. And second off, there's someone we're going to destroy very early on. So reject. All right, Tian Kai has died. Okay, interesting. He got contracted by Yuan Shu to fight Liu Chong. So he and our vassal master are temporarily in like a, you know, mercenary alliance. All right, uh, we will take this. We'll cut out this easy fight right here. Uh, I, I want to fight it with no casualty. Uh, even, I guess low is fine. Uh, but I think I'd rather fight it just to make sure we have no casualty. So, see you guys at the end. Alrighty, pretty clean fight here. Alright, and we got Lu Fan to join our court. So, we got ourselves another strategist. And we have a new mission to take care of the small city of Jian Ye. And once we capture it, we get Zhang Hong and Zhang Zhao, or the two Zhangs, to join our court. And this gives us another five turns of growing might. And we also got other missions, like if we take Poyang's town, we get Taishi Si to join our court. And also five more turns of growing might. Xingdu's large town will give us Lu Meng. And we completed one mission in our long list of Legacy of Wu quests. So things are getting uh, kicked off, and historically what happened is we made landfall, we beat back three of uh, Liu Yao's generals, and Liu Yao pretty much fled west. And then we turned, and we wiped out Jian Ye, and then we wiped out Kuai Ji and Xin Du before turning once again against Liu Yao, and uh, we completed the you know capture of the rest of this land as well. So we're going to work our way similar to that in history, it's just unfortunately we didn't get to fight 
not just this army, but we didn't get to fight Liu Yao's personal army, which I expect to come soon. That's why we even recruited such a large force in the first place uh, to make sure those fights happen. We did get this fishing port. Uh, we will try to keep it uh, if we can, at least in the early part. But, you know, we have to go that way. Uh, we might, you know, just have to lose it in the long, uh, just temporarily before recapturing it. It's not a big deal. If we could sign a temporary peace with them, it would be even better. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now is think about what to deal with this new general we got. So he's level 2, which is slightly useless for us because we want level 3 generals. We want level 3 generals to help us gain shared expertise. And somehow we're only gaining 5 points when I think we should be gaining 6. Right, she's level 3. But maybe because we didn't end turn yet, so we'll see. All right, the army is super healthy. Uh, we're going to go down the river actually to attack the small city we do have siege weapons to launch the assault right away but the problem is these are terrible against cities uh, tribuches are better but we'll make it work against this small city we're not going to upgrade it very much our trade routes have not bounced back which is interesting because i guess he doesn't own a port which means we don't actually have access to his capital Hmm. Nothing we can really do about that. I kind of want to sign some deals just so that we don't have to have negative income. Especially with these factions that are really far away. They're not going to have much of an impact on our gameplay, so... We might as well sell some of these. I think that should work. How much is he willing to pay for this? Okay, everything works. You know, any little bit of cash. Probably 111. Oh, maybe even more. 119. 20. Okay, 119 it is. Alrighty. So, negative 400. We'll live with that. And we'll head our way uh, through the river, maybe to there. So, maybe we want to pop out. But they can turn around and attack us. Or can they? They don't have enough movement. I don't know if we still have the family bonus of starting 50% on the river. We don't have that anymore. Alright, so there's no advantage to doing this. So, might as well sit inside for now. I don't want to upgrade it. I feel like it's a little bit of a waste of money at this point. So, let's just continue. Alright, Xiang Yufu. That's all in the north. Coalition into a military alliance. Chaos in the capital. So you full join does maybe he brings some items because he was a faction leader right a trader item a stone pig is it worth a thousand gold to recruit him just for those items it's very questionable actually yeah I don't think it's worth it all right we're gonna go towards Xian Ye. There's a few reasons for this. Uh, historically, you know, it makes sense. And also, I want that to be our capital. So capturing it first would make it our capital right away. They do have quite a force inside, which makes it even more interesting, actually. Because maybe we can siege, force them to come out and fight us, and then we don't actually have to use our siege weapon against a small city, which is walled. Alright, so that's all we can do. Let's continue. Alright, Cao Cao contracted Zanba as a mercenary to fight Liu Bu, it seems. And Liu Bu gets destroyed. He's going to be, you know, running to Liu Bei's faction next. No surprise there. Ha Empire switching hands, making a ton of peace. This is probably against us. Yep, Liu Bu runs to Liu Bei. Nothing new here. Chen Gong and Zhang Lao is in the court. 
Oh, tempting, huh? These aren't spies because the faction got destroyed. <laughs> Zhang Liao is basically... Imagine if somehow Zhang Liao joined Sun Ce. Like, clearly, historically impossible, but... Like, if he did, then he wouldn't be such a problem with defending Hefei against Sun Quan. He pretty much single-handedly held back the South. Alright, for that reason, we will recruit him. Um, I don't think... I mean, we could, right? From a collector's perspective, we can spare another thousand and tank our economy even more just for these unique generals. All right, we did it. Let's try to capture ourselves an actual city and build our economy up a little bit. So this fight here, uh, it's definitely doable, but it's a difficult siege with what we have, so I'd rather they come out and fight us where they believe they're stronger than us and they can just come out and clear us out. So we're actually going to just siege them a little bit. So let's hope this works. Let's end turn. Alright, as predicted, they rallied out uh, to fight us. This is our chance to try to wipe them out. Or at least damage them so much that the next fight where we siege their city will be a lot easier. Alright, let's go. Alrighty, so we got the open field fight that we wanted where our siege weapons will actually shine. And actually it is not raining, which is great for our fire attacks. Um, it's not going to be a totally clean fight given we're pretty even in terms of strength. Gonna pull our guys a little bit back. We're gonna put the archers in front of the siege weapons actually uh, Just so that everyone can maximize the range a little bit And these guys will be our front line uh, We'll put them in shield wall where they can reduce a lot of the range block chance and uh, These guys will be for flanking purposes We'll try to utilize our generals to the best of their abilities he has a inspiring surge. We'll reduce cooldown, so we'll fight near him. I'm assuming they'll come this way, and we'll protect one flank, probably this flank, just because we got cavalry's on this side to protect this flank. All right, let's go. First big fight. We don't even we don't even see the enemies. They're somewhere in the back. Um, We'll be patient. See if we can go find them. They're probably going to group up with the rest of the army. Anyone wants to come toward us? How come we see... Oh, there we go. Alright, they're together now. Hmm. How can we entice them to go towards this fire? Alright. They're taking the right angle. Why are we shooting at the gen the okay there we go. Let's slow it down a little bit. Ooh, they have fire arrows. So they're actually taking out our tower, which is a shame. The cavalry are coming to this flank, which is good news and bad news, because I feel like they're gonna loop all the way around like that. We're gonna light some fires when the infantry get close. That's actually a decent shot. But it'd be better if you guys shoot at like stuff like this. The axe bands are actually good against our. Well, it's axe versus axe, so both shields are useless because axe counter shield. Uh, archers can definitely shoot at the. All right, let's go light up a fire. Oh, two waves. The city wave still behind. All right, we let lit it up. Perfect. She's willing to duel. She activated her resistance here. Hold on. We will duel her. Gonna pull them over. Uh, why did all the siege weapons move up? 
Okay, move forward. Create some space. Yeah, because the siege weapons move up, they're actually in the way of the... We're gonna pull her away. Mm. Not ideal. It's okay, our front line's still very solid. If we can... Move them back a little. Whoever is still willing to listen to us. Alright, our cavalry owns their cavalry because we have extra charge bonus. If we could just get them to stand a little bit farther back. He need to win his duel quickly. Alright. Alright, we're getting hit by a lot of things that I don't like. We need our generals to go kill off their range, and then we need our cavalry to kill off their infantry. Rally back, try to find some targets. Herd them away. Charge. Come on, Sun so hurry up. Okay, charge. One each. Okay, the front line has been solved. Line it up. Uh, we'll let the enemy generals do whatever they want. Nothing we can really do to stop them. Can we please kill archers and not these spear units? Alright, Sun is about to win. Good for him. This guy can rally back. Move forward, flank. Come back. Sun Tzu won. Alright, pick up another target. Charge that. How are we doing back here? Shoot at them. Stay on him. Alright, we lost our mount. That's fine. Joe, you help out. Stay on our range units. Alright, we got this. Stay over here. If you still have a horse, go chase the range unit. Alright, back behind us, where they're killing our guys. We'll let them kill it, because we're about to win over here. Come on, Joey, stop them. Don't let them shoot. Alright, track that. Yeah, just the cavalry on is so incredible. Like, they're doing so much for us. Yeah, Trump was not really stopping them by himself. There we go. Have them charge over. They're done as well. Charge them. Alright, they should be able to take care of that. Make sure they turn to routing. We actually lost a lot more than I expected, so that to the point where I don't know if we can actually siege them next turn. Because our siege weapon actually got knocked out, which is pretty bad. Alright, I think we won. He's routing.
Yeah, we won. Uh, I'm going to clean out the battlefield a little bit, let our cavalry run down a few more units. Uh, but that's pretty much it. See you guys at the end. Alright, definitely not as clean as I would like. But I think we did the job in terms of reducing their range defense. Let's um, get replenishment here. Alright, uh, we got a level up. And because we have a character with rank 4, we get extra experience on Sun Tzu. And Sun Tzu is actually who I think leveled up to begin with. So he leveled up to 4 and then got extra experience, which pushed him to 5. Um, wonderful, you know, can't complain about that. And he actually has two abilities to pick from. Um, we're not going to get Blood Fury. Being Berserk is no fun. We could... Well, Zeal makes him a better duelist. We could just pick up these two and then work our way towards Devast oh, Devastating Roar is really good. Maybe we just run for Devastating Roar and just not let him duel as much. Alright, this way we can get Devastating Roar and reach faster. Alright, let's do that. We did get an auxiliary item. We got another Z of Imperial Guard. Interesting. So I have two of these items. John Lau is a little angry at us uh, for no particular reason other than the fact he's... Uh, Level 3, and it has a lack of purpose. Um, we might just have to splurge and give people titles to keep them happy at this point. If we want to keep all of these uh, legendary generals uh, content in our court. We can go with a very cheap 100 for 15 patrol commander. There we go. Uh, and the price of your promotion is to hand over this sword. Yeah, we really don't have many Enzuri items. That that's uh, that's a big issue, but that's fine. Uh, we can actually delegate this one, uh, save us a little time and effort. Uh, we're already kind of depleted, so it's not really going to make too much of a difference in terms of how long we have to spend replenishing. And we can get the two Jungs to join us, which will farther wreck our economy. Uh, but that's fine. The whole point of this campaign is to collect all these amazing characters that are new to this DLC. Uh, we will release him for money. Occupy. Alright, faction is destroyed. Uh, Tu Zhang joins us. New mission, destroy uh, Wang Lao. And if we d uh, capture the small town of Kuai Ji, we get Yu Fan to join us. And also more growing might. Another piece of our legacy completed. We're about to lose our uh, special tier right here. And we also get Zhou Tai and Jiang Qing to join our campaign following this uh, battle here. So you see, we have a character galore here. Zhou Tai has joined us. Amazing general. Uh, broken ability where he just basically doesn't die. It's literally undying Lao. And he has insane delegate value. You can use him as a defensive general anywhere you want. Uh, pretty amazing. Uh, Jiang Qing is another, I believe, bandit character that's uh, joining us here. Um, these two are both bandit characters, and they're going to be both great generals under Wu. Uh, but keeping all these generals happy and content and paying their salary is something that's going to be a challenge in the early game. Um, something we have to kind of balance our way. Uh, we also have to keep an eye on the share expertise because it's going to be available very soon, and we can use it to level up some of our other characters. And surprisingly, Chen Pu is not happy with us. He has a rivalry with Passerby. Okay, that's probably just the rivalry with the faction we just fought. And after we destroy them, that should go away next turn. Uh, recently, hire is going away. Demand for a higher core position. Interesting. Because we didn't give him uh, one of these core positions here. We're going to have to start uh, ranking up our faction so that we get more court position to offer to people. Uh, we are not very close in terms of prestige point. We need 20 more. So we're just going to have to speed up our conquests um, and try to work our way out. So this is a very unique set of challenges for his uh, early game. And we're going to have to basically work our way from that. Uh, we're going to end our episode here. Uh, we settled in Jianye, which is our capital. We got a bunch of characters, including some that doesn't even belong to us. Yeah, we're going to work our way through the campaign Uh taking care of the entirety of Jianye first before moving on to Xingdu and Kuai Ji 
and then going around about conquering the south, and then moving back slightly north towards Jinzhou area, uh, Lujiang, Jiangxia, Jiangling, Xiangyang, uh, Changsha, and then we'll decide what to do with the rest of the map and see how they evolve uh, themselves in this campaign. So come back next time as we will put all our guys to work and continue with this conquest. See y'all then. Bye.